Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. One of the twelve, who was called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and said, What are you willing to give me if I hand him over to you? They paid him thirty pieces of silver, and from that time on he looked for an opportunity to hand him over. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the disciples approached Jesus and said, Where do you want us to prepare for you to eat the Passover? He said, Go into the city to a certain man and tell him, The teacher says, My appointed time draws near. In your house I shall celebrate the Passover with my disciples. The disciples then did as Jesus had ordered and prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he reclined at table with the twelve, and while they were eating, he said, Amen, I say to you, one of you will betray me. Deeply distressed at this, they began to say to him one after another, Surely it is not I, Lord. He said in reply, He who has dipped his hand into the dish with me is the one who will betray me. The Son of Man indeed goes. And as is written of him, but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better for that man if he had never been born. Then Judas, his betrayer, said in reply, Surely it is not I, Rabbi. He answered, You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and giving it to his disciples, said, Take and eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which will be shed on behalf of many for the forgiveness of sin. I tell you, from now on, I shall not drink this fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it with you anew in the kingdom of my Father. Then, after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, This night all of you will have your faith in me shaken, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be dispersed. But after I have been raised up, I shall go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him in reply, Though all may have their faith in you shaken, mine will never be. Jesus said to him, Amen, I say to you, this very night, before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even though I should have to die with you, I will not deny you. And all the disciples spoke likewise. Then Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took along Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to feel sorrow and distress. Then he said to them, My soul is sorrowful even to death. Remain here and watch with me. He advanced a little and fell prostrate in prayer, saying, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. When he returned to his disciples, he found them asleep. He said to Peter, So you could not keep watch with me for one hour? Watch and pray that you may not undergo the test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Withdrawing a second time, he prayed again. My father, if it is not possible for this cup to pass without my drinking it, your will be done. Then he returned once more and found them asleep for they could not keep their eyes open. He left them and withdrew again and prayed a third time, saying the same thing. Then he returned to his disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Behold, the hour is at hand when the Son of Man is to be handed over to sinners. Get up, let us go. Look, my betrayer is at hand. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, accompanied by a large crowd with swords and clubs, who had come from the chief priests and the elders of the people. 
His betrayer had arranged a sign with them, saying, The man I shall kiss is the one. Arrest him. Immediately he went over to Jesus and said, Hail, Rabbi. And he kissed him. Jesus answered him, Friend, do what you have come for. Then stepping forward, they laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. And behold, one of those who accompanied Jesus put his hand to his sword, drew it, and struck the high priest's servant, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back in its sheath, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot call upon my Father, and he will not provide me at this moment with more than twelve legions of angels? But then how would the scriptures be fulfilled which say that it must come to pass in this way? At that hour, Jesus said to the crowds, Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to seize me? Day after day, I sat teaching in the temple area, yet you did not arrest me. But all this has come to pass, that the writings of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all of the disciples left him and fled. Those who had arrested Jesus led him away to Caiaphas, the high priest, where the scribes and the elders were assembled. Peter was following him at a distance as far as the high priest's courtyard, and going inside, he sat down with the servants to see the outcome. The chief priests and the entire Sanhedrin kept trying to obtain false testimony against Jesus in order to put him to death, but they found none, though many false witnesses came forward. Finally, two came forward who stated, This man said, I can destroy the temple of God in three days rebuild it. The high priest rose and addressed him. Have you no answer? What are these men testifying against you? But Jesus was silent. Then the high priest said to him, I order you to tell us under oath before the living God whether you are the Christ, the Son of God. Jesus said to him in reply, You have said so, but I tell you, from now on you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his robes and said, He has blasphemed. What further need have we of witnesses? You have now heard the blasphemy. What is your opinion? They said in reply, He deserves to die. Then they spat in his face and struck him, while some slapped him, saying, Now Peter was sitting in the courtyard. One of the maids came over to him and said, You too were with Jesus of Galilee. But he denied it in front of everyone, saying, I do not know what you are talking about. As he went out to the gate, another girl saw him and said to those who were there, This man was with Jesus the Nazarene. Again he denied it with an oath. I do not know the man. A little later, the bystanders came over and said to Peter, At that, he began to curse and to swear. I do not know the man. And immediately a cock crowed. Then Peter remembered the word that Jesus had spoken. Before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. He went out and began to weep bitterly. When it was morning, all the chief priests and the elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. They bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. Then Judas, his betrayer, seeing that Jesus had been condemned, deeply regretted what he had done. He returned the thirty pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders, saying, I have sinned in betraying innocent blood. They said, Flinging the money into the temple, he departed and went off and hanged himself. The chief priest gathered up the money, but said, After consultation, 
They used it to buy the potter's field as a burial place for foreigners. That is why that field, even today, is called the field of blood. Then was fulfilled what had been said through Jeremiah the prophet. And they took thirty pieces of silver, the value of a man with a price on his head, a price set by some of the Israelites, and they paid it out for the potter's field, just as the Lord had commanded me. Now Jesus stood before the governor, Pontius Pilate, and he questioned him. Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, You say so. And when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he made no answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many things they are testifying against you? But he did not answer him one word, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now on the occasion of the feast, the governor was accustomed to release to the crowd one prisoner whom they wished. And at that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. So when they had assembled, Pilate said to them, Which one do you want me to release to you, Barabbas or Jesus called Christ? For he knew that it was out of envy that they had handed him over. While he was still seated on the bench, his wife sent him a message. Have nothing to do with that righteous man. I suffered much in a dream today because of him. The chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas, but to destroy Jesus. The governor said to them in reply, Which of the two do you want me to release to you? They answered, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, Then what shall I do with Jesus called Christ? They all said, Let him be But he said, Why, what evil has he done? They only shouted the louder. When Pilate saw that he was not succeeding at all, but that a riot was breaking out instead, he took water and washed his hands in the sight of the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. Look to it yourselves. And the whole people said in reply, His blood be upon us and upon our children. Then he released Barabbas to them. But after he had had Jesus scourged, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus inside the praetorium and gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped off his clothes and threw a scarlet military cloak about him. Weaving a crown out of thorns, they placed it on his head and a reed in his right hand. And kneeling before him, they mocked him, saying, Hail! They spat upon him and took the reed and kept striking him on the head. When they had mocked him, they stripped him of the cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him off to crucify him. As they were going out, they met a Cyrenian named Simon. This man they pressed into service to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of the skull, they gave Jesus wine to drink mixed with gall. When he had tasted it, he refused to drink. After they crucified him, they divided his garments by casting lots. Then they sat down and kept watch over him there. And they placed over him his head the written charge against him. This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Two revolutionaries were crucified with him, one on his right and the other on his left. Those passing by reviled him, shaking their heads and saying, Likewise, the chief priests with the scribes and elders mocked him and said, revolutionaries who were crucified with him also kept abusing him in the same way. From noon onward, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, laba sabatini, which means, my God, my God, 
why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders who heard it said, This one is Paul or Elijah. Immediately, one of them ran to get a sponge. He soaked it in wine and putting it on a reed, gave it to him to drink. But the rest said, But Jesus cried out again in a loud voice and gave up his spirit. And behold, the veil of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth quaked, rocks were split, tombs were opened, and the bodies of many saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming forth from their tombs after his resurrection, they entered the holy city and appeared to many. The centurion and the men with him who were keeping watch over Jesus feared greatly when they saw the earthquake and all that was happening. And they said, Truly, this was the Son of God. There were many women there, looking on from a distance, who had followed Jesus from Galilee, ministering to him. Among them were Mary Magdalene, and Mary the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who was himself a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be handed over. Taking the body, Joseph wrapped it in a clean linen and laid it in his new tomb they had hewn in the rock. Then he rolled a huge stone across the entrance to the tomb and departed. But Mary Magdalene and the other Mary remained sitting there, facing the tomb. The next day, the one following the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, we remember that this imposter while still alive said, After three days I will be raised up. Give orders then that the grave be secured until the third day. This last imposter would be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, The guard is yours. Go, secure it as best you can. So they went and secured the tomb by fixing a seal to the stone and setting the guard. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So today is, in the Roman Missal, it says it's Palm Sunday of the Passion of the Lord. And it's kind of confusing because you think they'd make up their mind, the church. Is it Palm Sunday or is it the Passion of the Lord? I think when we listen to that first gospel we heard when we first came in, we hear this glorious entrance into Jerusalem. And our gospel, we just reenacted the Passion of Jesus Christ. And I think I can sum up today's readings in one word, expectation. We have a serious problem of expectation. There's this expectation that people have of Jesus Christ, and they place him over here, and they say, this is who you're supposed to be. And so when he enters Jerusalem, this is the guy they're expecting him to be. But the truth is that Jesus is not that person. He's this guy over here. And he has no intention of being who they expect him to be. And thus, Jesus has a big problem. Because their expectations are that Jesus is going to come into the city of Jerusalem and he's going to force the Romans out. He's going to reestablish the line of David. He's going to reestablish the kingdom of Israel in Palestine. 
and rule over Palestine, getting rid of the Romans and the oppression of the people of Israel and end their long exile. And that's their expectation. And he fails to live up to their expectation because he has a different plan. His plan is God's plan. And God's plan is a little different. It's over here. And Jesus isn't here to create a new Israel. He's here to create a new human being, to reconcile us to God, to make us a new creation. And to do that, he has to disappoint them. And when he disappoints them, they're going to crucify him because he's not who they expect him to be. And I think the lesson for us is really simple. What is our expectation of God? Do we expect God to solve all our problems? Because sometimes that's what I expect God to do. I expect him to fix everything in my life and make it better. And when he doesn't, I'm disappointed with him, and I'm disappointed with that guy over there. The problem isn't that guy over there. The problem is me. God isn't going to live up to my expectations. He's going to be exactly who he is. He's not going to solve my problems or yours. He's going to walk with us through our problems, through our struggles and trials. He's going to help us carry our cross. It may not seem like it, but that is what he came to do, to show us that it is not our job to put him in a box. It is our job to try and not allow those expectations to limit us. We are called to live a life as Jesus lived, giving of himself to those around him. Not to be a king who lords it over them as the Romans did, but a king who washes the feet of his friends. A king who brings healing and peace. We all want happiness. We all want peace. The problem is, is that we expect this Jesus over here to bring us peace. And he never will. And he never can. That's not what he came to do. The peace that he came to give us over here is reconciling us with God. We can only have peace when we have God in our hearts. Nothing in this world will bring us the peace that we desire, the happiness that we desire. Only by having a relationship with God, trusting in God, will we find that peace. And what we'll discover is, is that peace was always within us. It was never external to any of us. The peace that you desire is already within you. You just have to unlock it. You just have to realize that the God you expect over there is not the God who is standing right in front of you. Next week, we're going to give away a book, a Matthew Kelly book. It's on happiness and resisting happiness. And I suggest if you're able to attend next week's services, next week's Mass, to please take one of those books. Um, it's an amazing book, and I think if you give it an opportunity, it can help you unlock the happiness that Jesus over here wants to give you the love that God has for you and desires you to share with everyone you meet.